Ashadu an la ilaha illallah Wahdahu la sharika lah Ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Amma ba'du fa'udu billahi minash shaytani rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim My dear brothers and sisters, Mr. Chairman, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is with great humility and gratitude that I present to you a Quranic affirmation that provides a very short statement uh, that represents a metaphor as a model of a successful Islamic marriage relationship. Allah says in the Holy Quran, <clears throat> you are a garment for them and they are a garment for you. Today in the few minutes that we have, I want to talk about this concept of the libas, this garment that Allah sets forth for us in this similitude. Partners in love, friendship, and affection, the Islamic model for a successful marriage. When this topic came to me, I was in a way surprised because I recognize that we live in a time where the perceptions about Islam reign. And all over the world, people have different ideas about who Muslims are and what we believe. And it is often the case that people think of Islamic marriages as sterile, as formalities, simply a contract in some cases without any real human feeling. And so that is what I want to kind of hopefully through our own teaching here and the guidance that we have bring forward to us the fact that the vision of an Islamic marriage as presented in this verse is revolutionary. As you reflect with me over the next couple of minutes, what I want you to think about is this concept of libas, the clothes. Today, as we were getting ready, I'm sure, to come to this jalsaga, we all spend time preparing ourselves. Some of us traveling here, we've been preparing sometimes our clothes for days. We live in a time when our clothes arrive in packages from companies like Amazon, and we take a great deal of time to secure them and make sure they're clean, they're properly pressed and washed for occasions like these. And so this verse in the Holy Quran is a very profound verse. It should not be taken lightly. Hazrat Khalif al-Masih, the second, the promised son, explains to us in the commentary of the Holy Quran, he says, the clause, they are a garment for you and you are a garment for them very beautifully describes the object of marriage. The verse points out that the object of marriage is not just the gratification of carnal passions. The real object is the comfort, protection, and embellishment of the parties. For such are the uses of a garment as explained in the Quran itself. Thus, in a very few words, in a very few words, the Holy Quran describes the, relation, the true relationship that should exist between husband and wife, a description which has hardly a parallel in any other scripture. And I know that as we talk about this subject, there are people in this room with us today that are not married, but we are expecting in a future time to do so. Yesterday, as I was talking to some of my brothers, I, I became conscious of the fact that some of us just started marriages, they're new marriages. A few months ago, a few weeks ago, some of us, inshallah, will be starting this weekend. Others of us have, by Allah's grace, been married for many years. So in this is a guidance for all of us. It's not just that we should say, I'm not married, so therefore there is nothing here that for me right now. I can put it on pause until later. We have to remember that the guidance that comes to us in the Quran is for all of us and for all time. So do not set this aside because I'm not in that box yet. I'm not there right now. In Khalif al masihs Friday sermon of May 19, 2017, he explains something that the Prophet ﷺ taught us and why marriage is so important. 
and the model Islamic relationship is presented here. He says, if a man is not pious, how can his wife be pious? Verily, if a man becomes pious, his wife can also be pious. And really, it's telling us that there's a deep relationship between the spirituality we seek and hope for and the relationship we have in our home with our spouse. How can we reach the highest levels of spiritual practice if we think of it as a road we walk alone? So here the Prophet is explaining that, no, you have to be an example. And as you are becoming that example, you have to know that in that engagement is the piety of both parties. This teaching establishes the fact that there is some subtle, very powerful teaching here in marriage. In chapter 30 of the Holy Quran, Allah tells us something. He says, and among his signs that he has created, and one of his signs is that he has created for you wives from among yourselves, that you may find peace of mind in them. And he has put love and tenderness between you. In that surely are signs for people who are reflective. And that is what we're doing today. We're reflecting on this. On Allah's sign that he has put love and tenderness between us. Not just the formality that says, I am married, I have arrived. In our culture, we talk about the trophy wife and the trophy husband. I have one of those, like I have a nice car or I have a nice house. No. It is love and tenderness, and Islam presents us the examples. You know, as I was thinking through this, I saw that Hazrat Khalif al-Masih has actually addressed this so many times. And so it's very important for us, as Ahmadis, to go back to what Khalif al-Masih has continuously reminded us of, especially when you see that there are many reminders. Here in a Friday sermon, going back to 2004, Hazrat Khalif al-Masih says, he says, husband and wife should not highlight each other's shortcomings. Rather, they should look at the good qualities that each possess and be thankful to Allah for them. This is a very meaningful teaching, isn't it? Because we all understand, those of us who are married, those of us who have seen marriages sometimes, we see where the struggles and the tensions appear. And it often appears because we look at too many faults. We're always looking for the perfection of someone else, but not looking at the good they possess. And the truth is, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the chief of the prophets, is reported to have told us the, this very same lesson. So it's not a new lesson that we're learning. It is narrated by Hazrat Abu Huraira Anhu that the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu peace be upon him, said, the believer should not harbor hatred and malice towards his wife. If he dislikes something in her, then surely there is something else in her that he will find pleasing. So he should look for pleasing things about her. Don't just look at the negative things or things that right now you might not be comfortable with. It is also narrated again by Hazrat <clears throat> Abdullah bin Auf, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasalam, said, I swear by the being who holds the life of Muhammad salam, in his hands that no woman shall be deemed to have done her duty to God unless she has done her duty to her husband. And you will hear, read, and reflect on the hadith here. There are other hadith to this effect that says a dutiful wife is also a very important part of the marriage relationship. And we'll talk a little bit about a dutiful husband, so I don't want to feel like anyone is being singled out. In the small booklet of hadith, 40 Gems of, duty, of, of uh, Beauty, there are a number of hadith to this effect as well. There's one that says, Allah is not pleased with such a lady with whom her husband is not pleased. And in fact, Allah says again, he said, if, if the husband of a Muslim wife dies pleased with her, she will by the grace of God enter paradise. And what I want us to be mindful of as we are thinking through this remembrance, this reflection that we're going through, this all calls to the need of a loving relationship, not just duty, not just formality, where if the relationship is loving and there is true feeling there, then that love and dutifulness eventually becomes a saving grace to paradise for the spouse. This is a very powerful teaching. 
Sa'ad ibn Abu Waqqas, anhu, one of the companions of the messenger, he says that the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says, whatever you spend seeking thereby the pleasure of Allah, you will have your reward, even if that is the morsel that you put in the mouth of your wife. Isn't this a very tender teaching? Imagine that. Who do we feed? Literally with a spoon. Someone we love. Not someone to whom we are simply duty bound. You take a spoon, to, I see so many children here today. Some of them are young babies and I've watched the fathers. I'm on the brother's side and I watch them. I see them feed them with a spoon. I see them unwrap their food and give them to eat. And I say, look at this love that this father has for this child. And here's the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu saying, this is the kind of love that you have towards your wife, towards your spouse. Putting a morsel in their mouth, a morsel on their plate. This is a, a relationship of love, not one of duty. The second Khalifa reminds us in the, the publication of Pathway to Paradise, there's a chapter on, on, on marriage uh, put together by our Lajna. And the second Khalifa, he says, it says, it's our duty to see that marriage is duly respected and adhered to faithfully. It entails a heavy responsibility for both man and wife. But I find very few people realize it. When it is attempted, it is done on a very inadequate scale. This is the word of our Khalifa, our second Khalifa. And he's reminding us that we should think of this as a very serious undertaking, marriage. And not just, again, out of duty, but out of true relationship and true friendship and true human feeling. The best example, of course, we have is the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And we sometimes say today that we are busy and it's hard to find time to do different things for family and for our children, for our wives, to take that us time but I want to give an example of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Here was a person, we know the messenger, we know of his life in so many stories. He was very occupied in so many things. He was the leader of a country, the administrator of a city. He was a teacher of more than 10,000 people at one time when the Muslims marched into Mecca. They numbered 10,000. And on top of that, he was writing letters to heads of government in Rome, in Persia in Ethiopia, he was reaching out to all these people, spreading the message of Islam. But yet, he was still finding time to be a husband at home. One person at one point inquired from Hazrat Aisha Radhi Anha, the blessed wife of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu She said, they said, what was the business of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu when he was at home? She replied, he would occupy himself in many affairs of the house. For instance, he would sew his own clothes. He would mend, mend his own clothes. He would sweep the house. He would milk the goat or the sheep. He would go to the market to buy groceries. He would mend his shoes. And he would help in any other household duties. Is this not the hallmark of an affectionate partner? One who is thinking about the feeling of his spouse not just living life for himself. He had a mountain. We know he had a mountain of duties, mountain of responsibilities to reform the entire world. And I am absolutely sure that the companions would have said, you go ahead and do your job. We, we will do it. As you heard in Sohail Hussain Sahib's speech, they were ready to die for the messenger. But he himself said, no, some of these I, rem I, I remain for myself because I am a husband in my home and I love my wife. Hazrat Khalif al-Masi reminds us again of a saying of the Prophet in Malfuzat. And he reminds us multiple times, this reference is in multiple sermons, both in July of 2004 and in May of 2017. Hazrat Prophet says, husband and wife should stay together as very good and sincere friends. Very good and sincere friends. So we all understand today we are, we, we are people, we have associations, but that your spouse is not a secondary association. They are the one to whom you have given your heart. And so we must learn to be patient and loving. The Hazrat Prophet ﷺ, again, he would never in any way be impatient with his wife, noble companion Hazrat Amajan. 
And this wasn't just his words. The people in the household would see it. And the servants in the household would say, kind of an off comment, but they would say, they'd say, Mirza Sahib is really in compliance with his wife, which means he deferred to her out of respect and out of love. And there are many instances where he would give her the space to sit where he was sitting, where responsibilities had been, she had decided on things that were to go on around his home in Kadian. I myself was there recently, and they showed me a porch. They said this porch was decided upon by Hazrat Amajan. She wanted it this way. And some of the companions, they weren't very sure, and they went back to the Prophet. They said, well, if, you know, maybe you don't want to put the porch like that. He said, no, Hazrat Amajan, she has decided, and we will do it this way. Very loving, caring, affectionate relationship. Here's another reflection from the life of the Holy Prophet Muhammad and, 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 and this one often is very resonating because we know that we often go traveling even for Jamaat business. At one time, the Holy Prophet Muhammad was reported by Hazrat Anas anhu, so, to have said, to, a, a lifestyle of the Holy Prophet, that he, whenever he returned home from a journey and it was night, he would seek to stay out of the city and he would come home during the morning or the afternoon. And at one occasion, they asked him, they said, why do you do this? He said, because I want to make sure the, the wives and the members of the household are properly prepared. And we all understand that. Those of us who have wives, those of us, we all have mothers, they want to make sure everything is just right. And so when you show up at the wrong time, sometimes you annoy them. And the Holy Prophet is saying, I might be coming from, think about his journeys. Think about the journey we will take when we go home today. We go on plane tomorrow. We go home on planes and buses and cars. He's riding on these camels for miles. And he's seeing his home and he's like, I want to go home. But let me make sure, let me sit and wait so the ladies know that we are coming home and they can prepare for us and don't feel as if we have in any way violated their sanctity. So this is the treatment of a loving husband. He was, as Hazrat Abu Huraira who says, he was karakum karakum li alihi. He was the best. He said, the best among you is the one who treats his wife the best. In a recent letter to our beloved Amir Sahib, Khalifa Masih al Kamis, Ayatul Al Ben Asil Aziz, back in 2006, he said that I've discovered that there are some different reasons why marriages break. And of course, although we're talking about companionship, we can't forget that sometimes marriages break. And Huzur said that here is some of the reasons that I have seen why this happens. He said people abuse and quarrel with each other. He said sometimes we are practicing on Islamic customs where you are forcing each other to go to events, mixed events, especially in a society where there are so many mixed events and you want to take the wife, again, that trophy wife concept, and sister is not comfortable. You are not fulfilling sometimes the rights of each other. You're not paying due process to the affection of your true friend, your companion, your spouse. But we have to remember that all of the examples of the messengers before us did not do this. They always tried to show us the examples of duty. And the Prophet ﷺ has such a profound statement here that was recorded in Maktubi Ahmad, where he talks about the relationship between husband and wife. And I want you to listen very carefully to this. It's, it's kind of longish, but I want you to hear it. So please open your ears and listen to the words of the Prophet ﷺ. He says, even though siblings and children are dear to a person, the relationship between husband and wife is unique. Their bond is special and they become one in each other. They spend a great deal of time together, they sleep together, and become codependent upon each other, as if they are part of one another. They become enamored with each other and are immersed in love with each other. There hardly is a heart that is not moved by thinking of such deep love in times of separation. It is this bond that one is reminded of when one is separated for a few weeks. 
It is such a loving and devotional bond that Allah the Almighty has repeatedly alluded to develop in a spousal relationship. It is due to this deep love between husband and wife that one is able to overcome worldly negativity. It is due to this deep love between husband and wife that one is able to overcome the worldly negativity. Even the prophets of Allah were dependent on such love. Whenever the Prophet Muhammad salam, was sad, he would nudge Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha and he would say, oh Aisha, comfort me, I am sad. This proves that one's wife should truly be a great friend who is enriching in love and who is exceeding in love and sympathy towards children, caretaker of the home, and true comforter in times of grief. What a shock it is for a husband when his wife passes away. He is overcome by sadness, loneliness, and is engulfed in darkness, and the house haunts him and his heart is broken in pieces. This is the teaching from which we come. In Kashtinu, Hazrat Prophet he reminds us again, he says, whosoever does not treat his wife and her relatives with gentleness and benevolence is not of my community. Every husband who deceives his wife and every wife who deceives her husband is not of my community. These are the teachings that will, as I say, bring about a revolution in the world. We live in a world where we see so much struggle of people seeking these affections, looking for love in sometimes all the wrong places. But we have it all here in the Quran and in the guidance of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we have it in the guidance of the Caliphtul Masih. May Allah help us to stay close to this Hidayat, this guidance, and establish love and affection in our homes and practice the revolutionary Islamic values of marriage. Assalamu alaikum wa